Zemo, and the nerds you take into battle with them. And that's the next team review, guys. We're going to do the Zemo Hydra team. Notice, it's even got a different symbol. Uh, and then there's others Hydra teams. Von Strucker Hydra. But that's that's comic book stuff. We're not here for comic book stuff. No one wants to talk about that. We want to talk about how the Hydra team works. If they're a good team, if they're a bad team. They're clearly only a four-person team, but so are the Marauders, and we found plenty of uses for that. So let's take a quick look at the Zemo Hydra team, how good they are as a team, and uh, where we can use First, we're gonna go straight into Blitz, so let's check it out. Uh, as you'll know, I'm using Gamora on this team. There are plenty of uh, great fifths you can use. Kingpin is a great fifth. Um, that's it. <laughs> you can use some of the other Hydra characters like if you don't have Red Skull or if you'd rather just balance it out. Hydra Scientist is a very good member of this team. Um, any healer is actually okay on this team. There's plenty of other options, but for this, we're just going to go through that as we talk about the availability. Now, as we've talked about in the past, uh, Red Skull uh, is not farmable. Taskmaster is not farmable. Zemo, not farmable. But I don't really have enough time to wait for them to make these characters farmable. It's been months, months uh, since they've become available. They are in the game. They are accessible in the game. So... We're going to go ahead and just figure out what everybody is best at. So talking about availability, right? Just We're just going to talk about the four characters. Zemo, currently unfarmable. Kingpin, he's available in the Blitz store. You get him for free with a Happy Meal. And most people have a two or three star Kingpin at the end of their starting of the game because there's an event uh, that unlocks him. Uh, Hydra Grenadier, uh, I don't even remember where he is because I just keep looking down and seeing that I got more shards on him on both my main and free-to-play account. Uh, I assume he's in the Blitz store, but I could be wrong. Uh, I'm not giving you this information because uh, I know for a fact you know where he is because you see him and just don't care. Uh, and of course, Winter Soldier is a node farmable character that you usually skip because why would you need Winter Soldier? Um, that's pretty much it for the team. Uh, whoever the fifth character you happen to use on this team, don't go out of your way for anybody. Just use the character that doesn't have a home right now. Kingpin does do very well on this team, uh, if for no other reason than getting a couple of assists. But where this team excels is a little bit different than where some other teams excel or how they excel. So we'll go into that when we talk about usability. And... They're actually pretty usable. They're a little bit more useful uh, than the Hydra defense team. Crossbones, Hydra Grenadier, Winter Soldier. Easy access. Most people have them unlocked already. Uh, and if you do have them unlocked with Baron Zemo, these guys kind of put together a pretty decent run at the, you know, villains event. Uh, the villains won fights. They're not terrible at it, mostly because of Zemo. Like, let's be clear, Zemo is the reason. Uh, but, you know, throw a healer on that team, give them a little bit of sustain, and then watch them explode and do a bunch of AoE damage. Huge boost. They can be used in all of the ISO campaign, which is kind of funny. Actually, just Zemo alone can be used to clear the ISO campaign because of how his AoE works. But, yeah, this team is totally reasonable. Again, just slap a healer on the team, give them a little bit of sustain. Wood healer? Doesn't matter. Aim researcher, hydra scientist, Minerva if you got her. Anywhere you can use these characters will be okay. But they're pretty useful as an all-around team. Even as a raid team uh, with a really good healer like a Shuri or a Minerva, I guess, for lack of a better team, uh, they aren't terrible. They have a lot of decent damage. They have a handful of AoE. Um, sure, I think it's a little bit better because of the energy. Just now I'm thinking about it. But they're not terrible. Would I use them in U7? No, probably not. Do I think people think Zemo is better than he is? Yeah. That doesn't mean he's not amazing. It just means he's not the greatest thing to ever happen to the game. Um, Zemo, great in PvP. Crossbones, surprisingly, actually pretty good in PvP. Um, because no one has red stars, including him. So he just actually has good scaling damage. Uh, Hydra Grenadier is still kind of useless, uh, but he's no longer the saddest sadness grenade. Uh, he does have two sadness grenades. And Winter Soldier is just Winter Soldier. He's the military tag no one uses. He's 
Actually, now that I think about it, you could just go ahead and put Captain Marvel on this team, and it works pretty okay, too. Uh, there, this team's got a lot of usability. There's always that fifth possible character, you know, whoever it ends up being in the game. Uh, there's literally no shortage of Hydra characters they can add. They can add Madam Hydra. Um, but I do kind of like the way they're going right now, which is all of Hydra leadership has their own kind of team. So I don't think they'd go ahead and release somebody huge from Hydra to be the fifth on this team. Maybe like Agent Bob of Hydra or something like that would be the character they put in. Um, who knows? But like I said, there's plenty of other options. Kingpin, obviously, they're all villains. He helps villains. That's great. I use Gamora because... You know, King Crossbones will ult, put a lot of people down, and then Gamora will clean up because she doesn't actually do damage on her own. There's plenty of options. There's really no bad fifth character to put in this team because of how strong Baron Simo is. Speaking of that, take a quick look at this team uh, where their main use is war offense, right? That's what this team is. And realistically, it's not even this team. It's specifically Baron Zemo. This team can basically beat up in war... Uh, pretty much anyone like not necessarily uh as guardians but zemo's kid alone gives them so much strength against the hydra team which is their actual counter hydra defense red skull hydra uh mercenaries they have the tools to beat the mercenaries but it's not the mercenaries kind of reach super saiyan faster if that makes they're like vegeta to goku if you're following the, the reference like the mercenaries at like 6664 are awesome and this team kind of needs a little bit more investment uh zemo is just great but like winter soldier runs out a lot of value hydra grenadiers focus is questionable and crossbones is only damage when it's comparative to how much the people he's fighting are so like well, if you had the option of this entire team at 6664 and, you know, the Mercs at 6664, the Mercs are probably going to be better. It's going to come down to, like, stats and a little bit of investment. But once you get this team up and running, once this team is, you know, if each of these guys is, like, 70k, I wouldn't really worry about going up against the com uh, combined team, uh, Coulson or uh, Mercs or any of those minion-based teams where their like average character is like 80k or so because this team will probably push through so let's take a quick look at crossbones first when we look at their tier fours uh <laughs> this should tell you everything you need to know right um iso 8 on crossbones is damage there's really no reason to do anything but damage uh on spawn so striker uh if baron zemo's an ally he gets an abil ability energy uh gains some health Gain some health. I didn't even think this health was worth it enough to put this in, and I have 30,000 of it. I mean, I guess I could, but I don't want to, because I don't respect crossbones. Uh, you don't really need anything on this. Uh, detonate. 40% uh, damage. All the buffs came before. So, eh. Wrath. Actually, to be fair, this heal is probably a little bit more relevant now that he's actually doing it on turn two. Uh, so this might actually be worth the small investment it takes to upgrade. But the two to three counters versus just two counters, no. Not at all. And Piston Punch, 25% chance of bonus attack. Uh, that's actually pretty reasonable uh, to, you know, to always on basic or hit that line the bonus attack is what triggers the offense down so you're pretty much guaranteeing that but his focus isn't phenomenal it gets a little bit better on this team but nothing to be noted about i wouldn't necessarily tier for this uh, and that's pretty much it when it comes to crossbones hide your grenadier uh if baron zemo is an ally he gains 20 percent damage gain 30 percent focus uh 30 focus here and of course if you are trying to make sure that everything sticks when they try uh, this tier 4 is kind of important. I know it seems like a little, but 10% focus is a little bit more than 10% damage in the scale of things. Uh, and since it's everybody, it's not unreasonable. Cross a grenade or double sadness. Uh, attack primary and adjacent targets for 220 damage. Clear one positive effect from each target. Repeat this attack one time. Uh, I, this is a very big AoE 
dispel plus damage attack. The damage is questionable, so that's all you get with the tier 4. That's up to you. But the uh, clear positive effects is incredibly relevant. And since it clears it from each target and not just the primary target, which it used to do, huge deal. Uh, and then flat grenade is just damage. You know, just damage. So no notes there. Winter Soldier. Uh, Expert Assassin. He has crit chance. If Zemo's present, he gains health. Gain an additional 5% crit chance and uh, self and all Hydra allies. Cool. Uh, crit's kind of relevant on him, but again, he is still a damage dealer, so that's up to you. You can put Raider on him, or you can put, you know, damage. Skirmisher, I don't think so, because he's only ever hitting one target, so it's not relevant. A mechanical Arm. Big dumb damage. This is an 80% increase in big dumb damage. I like big dumb damage. He does big dumb damage. This is big dumb damage. Relentless assist. Uh, so here's where things get weird. Attack primary target. Uh, bonus attack. Guaranteed two times for 150 with tier 4s. 75% uh, chance to apply bleed. It doesn't increase the chance to apply bleed to 100, which is unfortunate. It should do both. It should guarantee the attack and guarantee the bleed. It doesn't. Uh, because it doesn't, this is a questionable tier 4, but, you know, it's still damage. Big dumb damage. I like damage. So, uh, and then Winter Assault or his assist. <laughs> Again, I can't stand this small piercing stuff. Like, it will never make a difference. It can't make a difference. This is, like, worth... If your character is max red stars, max, um, gear, you know, max ISO 8, like, maxed every stat, and he still isn't doing what he's supposed to do, I promise you 5% piercing ain't gonna make the difference. You know what I mean? Like, it's not worth it. If you're gonna do just damage, it needs to be real, and they just didn't do it. But I guess if they made his basic attack any more damage, uh, he would be amazing, and they don't want Winter Soldier to be amazing, so that is what it is. Really no notes on this. Uh... Unfortunately, he's a bio character, even though he has a metal arm. So, he takes bio gear, which means it's not going to be a lot of investment. Just thought I'd comment on that. Last, we have Baron Zemo. Zemo is great. Zemo is awesome. We love Zemo. Uh, true leader. I'm not even going to tell you what the upgrade gets you, because I didn't even look at it. No, I'm kidding. I looked at it. It was really important. Uh, his on-turn charge attack uh, is 300% damage. It goes up by 100 on both. So it's 100% uh, damage, and uh, um, and minions take 400. Like, it's huge. That's a huge amount of damage. Clear three positive effects from all enemies as opposed to two. Uh, apply disrupted always happens, so you don't get that. But 20% speed for self uh, versus the base 20. That's a huge speed increase. That's not just 10%, which we've already discussed in many other videos is good. This is 20%. This is double what it normally offers. Huge and non-minion Hydra allies, which, um, you know. So some people will be like, well, you can put Red Skull. He's not a minion on this team. They're like, yeah, but then you literally devalue an entire other four characters that need Red Skull to survive. So that's up to you. If you don't have the other Hydra team, yeah, go ahead. Put Red Skull on here. He won't become immortal uh, in war defense, so that's useless, right? Um, but outside of it, he might be somewhat useful. So that's that's completely up to you. This tier four is kind of like... I, I, I don't even want to say required. This was a pleasure to buy. You know what I mean? Um, Premeditation. This is just damage. All of his goodies actually come at level 5. So this is really just an increase in the damage stat. It's good damage, but it's it doesn't really change the difference. The ability block and uh, the slow is, is what's relevant. Honestly, if it wasn't rebound chain, this would be a little bit better. But... The chance that it just keeps bouncing back and forth and not going to other characters kind of questions it. Uh, it's still good, but the fact that he gains charge on it is relevant. It's why I usually open with it as opposed to his special, because his special is so fast, it's going to fire off all the time, and I really like that passive. Speaking of his special, Dominating Blow. Clear 3 Death Proof from Primary Target. Attack Primary Target for a decent chunk of... This is good damage. 450. That's a lot. If primary target is a minion, attack for 900 plus 20% piercing. Murder a minion. Minions killed by this attack cannot revive. Kind of wish it just said anyone killed by this attack could not revive. Uh, I feel like the minion murder was okay, but like, you know, 
I like this cannot revive thing. They need to be a little bit more free with it. I think, anyway. Uh, gain 5,000 XP focus for this attack. But these numbers. Sometimes you see 100,000. None of this matters. Just, it, th this is supposed to tell you it's supposed to happen, right? So, it is what it is. This attack is unavoidable and cannot be blocked. Which is awesome when you're, when you're shoving it right into a uh, shield security. Who's just sitting there and you're just like, nope. Bonk. Really fun. Anyway, this th no question uh, that the tier four is worth it. It's just a sh like a ton. It's just a ton more damage. It's eighty percent to non minion, one hundred and sixty to minion. The piercing is whatever. Who cares? But this, since this attack is happening all the time, uh, every other turn, it is totally worth investing in. And then we have the basic, and again, basics just damage. Apply assist now to Hydra Grenadier Ally. Great. Cool. Uh, you're not using the basic too often, you know? It's like every fourth turn. But turn one, you're ul ulting or using a special. Turn two, you're using a special or ulting. Turn three, if you use the special, you're using the special or you're basicing. And then you're going back. So like, it, it's there's really no reason to ever invest in this. Uh, even in PvP, it doesn't really make a difference. And then as far as, uh, ISOs, it's like Striker, right? It's, it, he's already clearing buffs from everything he's doing anyway. You don't really need Skirmisher on him. Just put more damage on him. He likes damage. He kind of needs a little bit more damage, too, to kind of balance out through the year. Like, you know, his mine's 60k. Uh, as a matter of fact, the fact that I don't have Striker on him right now upsets me. I'm gonna go put it on him. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And then we talk about the fifths. Uh, Kingpin, uh, if, I'm not gonna go through his kit, but, like, Kingpin gives villains a chance to assist, uh, on turn on every attack of a villain, so, like, you know, extra damage is extra damage. Um, I use Gamora, I've already discussed her. There, any healer gives him sustain. You know, Ultron, I, I feel like that's silly. I feel like saying Ultron is silly. You guys know you could put Ultron on any team and it'll be better. So there's a lot of good value here that you don't have to worry too much about. Uh, what I will say, though, is Baron Zemo is the one who beats the Hydra team. The other characters are just there for, you know, basically to make sure that Zemo doesn't get targeted by all the attacks. Because whether they live or die, Zemo's going to kill that team on his own, you know? Um, so the stronger your Zemo is, the better off you're going to be. But when you do come into the other matchups, that's just beating Hydra. If you're trying to win against the Mercs, you do need the extra value on Winter Soldier or Crossbones and Hydra Grenadier, actually. Hydra Grenadier's special now becomes the best attack against the Mercs because it's just constantly ripping not only blocks off with the at double attack, but buffs that are on the character, too. So, pretty reasonable uh, team against a lot of setup. And uh, it's kind of like phases. Like, the first phase is like, how strong is my Zemo? And then Zemo will be able to carry you against uh, Hydra teams. And then it's how strong do I want to get the other characters? A bio, uh, a tech, and then another tech. <laughs> um, and that answer is, well, strong enough to beat Colson Shield, which I have been able to do. Now, again, look at the power of my team. I'm not talking about 400k Colson Shields, but, like, you know, I see, I've seen a couple 200-something Ks, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this at two, 280s. I'm like, yeah, this is fine. Uh, Zemo has the, the tools to do it. Zemo can ability block the right character at the right time. Uh, they can take Medic out of the fight immediately, or take out Assaulter, or, you know, start ripping the buffs off of a shield security and get him dead as fast as possible, because he ain't going to block anything. Huge boost from this team. So, uh, when we talk about a rating, uh, this team, surprising, this team is actually a little underrated. Uh, I'm going to give them, like, an A-, minus, and I know it sounds crazy, but I think that Okay, let me be clear. This team is a B team. So I've said that. I'm giving this team an A-, minus, and I'm giving it because I know a little bit of something that a lot of people don't about what the future of this team is going to look like. And suffice it to say, I think that the core comp of, like, Baron Zemo, Crossbones, and Hydra Grenadier, I'm leaving Winter Soldier out for reasons, uh, I think that team is actually okay. I think it's fine in Arena. I think you get a lot of value out of it. I think the team has a lot of things. It's got some AoE. It's got some some big single target damage. It's got assassinates against certain types of characters. It's got 
you know, buff clears. It basically only missing two things. A heal and energy. So if there was a character to come out that would get, offer them sustainability plus some energy regeneration, well, then this team would be for real. So I'll give it the B plus rating, but I'll tell you, like, don't sleep on them. This team might get a lot better in the future. Uh, but that's it. So comment below let me know not what you think about Baron Zemo, because we all know Baron Zemo is a good character. Whether he's great or super great or god tier, that's irrelevant. That doesn't matter. He's a good character. I do want to know what you think about the rest of the characters. Like, Do you think they did enough for the Winter Soldier and Crossbones and Grenadier? Have you used this team against um, anyone but the Hydra guys and been like, yeah, this is great. Comment below let me know what you think. Other than that, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.